You know, everywhere we turn these days, things seem to be costing us more and more. So much so that a Statistics Canada survey found that nearly three in four Canadians report rising prices affecting their ability to meet day-to-day -day expenses. We're seeing that everywhere. We're seeing that in the food banks. We're seeing that everywhere we go. The amount of people that are in front of me in line that can't afford what they have even, you know, in their bin or their basket, it's more and more. So here to help us find financial stability in these unstable times, Miss Martha Adams, everyone. <laughs> You touch your heart, and I'm glad you did, because this is one of those situations where we have to have so much empathy, because yes. people have this thing when it comes to money, and I'm yes. included in that. Like, it's, we fear it. Yes. It's like, you know, we feel, we feel sort of like it's a scary place, so Absolutely. we need to alleviate some of that. I want to ask the audience, though, by show of hands, how many of you are feeling a bit anxious these days about expenses? I'm with you. Yeah, right? <laughs> It's a global thing. So yeah. what's what do we need to be doing, Martha? What's the first step we can take to start regain the feeling of financial stability? So in touching our heart, one of the first things is to prioritize the way we feel. Yep. Right? And so we can do that with something I love, which is a money mantra. And so this is one that I use personally. Okay. It is connected and limitless. Right? And so especially when things are feeling so out of control. Mm. So now we can start to put that mantra into action. Right? Okay. And so let's start to connect with our financial flow by looking at our accounts and seeing the money in and out. And whether you're tracking that on an app or a spreadsheet, you're able to reassess and reevaluate your purchase decisions and perhaps some monthly regular monthly expenses that mm -hmm. you can even renegotiate, for example, your cell phone, right? Okay. So as you are reevaluating, consider putting some funds towards what I like to call your financial independence fund, Yeah. otherwise known as an emergency fund. But Got you know, it. financial independence, I like that so much more. I like that too. And when you say connected and limitless, the mm -hmm. limitless makes sense to me because we're talking about an abundance mindset. Yes. What does connected mean? So connected means knowing what your numbers are yeah. oh, and then being it. able to make the best decisions for you based on that financial flow. Right. Isn't right? it interesting that everything hard that we need to do in life, we first have to get real with what the situation is? Yes. And that's the part I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so the space Ew, that you do. Look at what I spent money on. Gross. <laughs> and there's like five billion Starbucks charges. <laughs> it's like, maybe I should drink less coffee. Or maybe I can make my coffee at home, but it's like I don't want to deal with the real truth of that. But that's what you have to start by doing, right? Yeah, and Get now real. you can enjoy the Starbucks because perhaps you are prioritizing Starbucks versus something else. Yeah, so okay. I'll bring my lunch till the cows come home, but Perfect. let me have my coffee. I agree. So what can a financial, financial independence fund help you with and how much should we have set aside uh, for it? What should we be sort of gearing towards. Yeah, so it helps you feel financially anchored and yeah. in control when yeah. those life situations come up that have a price tag associated with yes. it, right? It also helps reduce or completely eliminate that you know heavy feeling of debt that we often have, mm -hmm. right, with those. As for how much to have set aside, I like to recommend three to six months of your living expenses, yep. but even with that in mind, start. Right? Mm -hmm. Starting to contribute to that is going to help. Okay, you just got to start. Yeah. Interest rates a little bit high right now. So any thoughts on people, what people can do about their borrowing accounts? Yes, so start to look at what your interest rates are because that's okay. going to help you make the most effective decisions with your dollar. Okay. Right? So from there, you're going to prioritize your highest interest rate first, paying that down and eventually off, right? Yeah. And then especially if you have more than one borrowing account, consider consolidating them for a better interest rate to help you pay things down and off quicker. And right? a borrowing account would be considered a credit card, line a line of credit, credit, anywhere you're borrowing, put the one that you've got the highest interest rate, that's your top priority, get that down to nothing, then go to your next one. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. What suggestions do you have for someone to increase or diversify their income? Because sometimes it's not even a matter of, sometimes you just can't pay more down because you need more coming in. Yes. Right? Absolutely. So it can be an encourager to bring in more income into your system. Yeah. And so one of the things that I recommend is that, you know, you look to what your talents and your abilities are. Okay. Right? So, for example, if you... I can you, dance. That's fabulous. <laughs> right? That could, that could Who earn wants you... To pay I dance with my clothes on, though. That, Can that I get work. any money from that? <laughs> I love it. Here are some other examples that might, that might work out, too. So if you are creative, 
right? You're yeah. a graphic designer or, or writer. You can consider freelancing. Yeah. If you have additional space in your home, mm -hmm. you can consider bringing on a tenant or listing oh, it on smart. Airbnb, right? Yes. And if you want full flexibility with your schedule and you have a car, you can consider Uber or Lyft, right? Yes. When we're talking on bringing in extra income, taking on extra work, yeah. there are some other important considerations. Right? Okay. First of all, your mental health and well-being, mm. right? Any requirements you have from your employer, also really important. Yeah. And then any other legal or tax requirements as well. Right? Okay. But it's still really beneficial because, or can be really beneficial because, you know, you're not reliant on a single source of income, especially in unstable times. Totally. And I can't tell you the amount of people I know that go into these delivery jobs. Like, uh, it could be Uber Eats, it could be like all of those kind of jobs. You can jump into them if you're in a season of tightness. Yes. And jump back out. Absolutely. Right? So yes, they're really good. They have. Uh, okay. Let's say that things start to go well. We followed your advice. It's all good. How can someone start investing some of the additional income? Yes, that's so, coming in. Yes, so I love that because now here they are feeling financially stable yeah. and, and starting to invest. Yeah. So there are a lot of options available for you there. Whether you are you know, wanting to and feeling comfortable doing that on your own in a self-directed brokerage account, yeah. or you want to work with a financial advisor who's going to help you, you know, with your investment goals. One of my other recommendations is working with a certified financial planner because in yeah. a lot of ways, they can help you with your financial goals beyond solely investments. In a lot of ways, they act like a general practitioner for your financial well-being and your financial goals, referring to other specialists where appropriate. Well, thank you for putting our minds at ease there, Martha. Let's go to